actions when viewing the reality show president. He had American carnage. Remember, that was really an inspiring speech. Through Charlottesville, through slandering the entire continent of Africa, Donald Trump has earned the first year distinction of carrying the lowest approval rating in American history. He earned it. But last night, the Washington Post said he was on his best behavior. True. But that doesn't mean he didn't deliver a divisive speech. He did. And while it may have polled lower, according to CNN, than any State of the Union address in 20 years, almost half Americans thought it was, quote, very good. Again, we're grading on a curve, and in Trump world, that's a big win. Never mind that his posts about the economy were mostly hollow. Job growth, wage growth, even the stock market performed as well or better under Barack Obama. Check the numbers. Hmm. But you know, Democrats did nothing to show that they have a better deal for America. Five responses on five different platforms from five different speakers is not where the opposition party needs to be at such a historical moment in time. They shouldn't fool themselves either. Last night was a good night for Donald Trump. And it should hold him in good standing with the supporters and independents, at least until his first tweet today, which Willie, what's that gonna come in? I don't like, know. Maybe 15 minutes. Give it a couple hours. hours. Yeah. yeah Within but the I, hour. I do, I, do <laughs> think, I do think, though, again, grading on a curve, Understanding that a lot of people were saying great things about his speech last year, uh, and three days later, of right. course, he said Barack Obama wiretap wire tap. was going around wiretapping his phones <laughs> in Trump Tower. So, again, everything is relative. That said, you look at the numbers, his base loved it, yeah. and a lot of independents, independents yeah. who were starting to move his direction slightly over the past couple weeks in some polls, uh, liked what they heard last night. Yeah, if you took that speech last night in a vacuum, having known nothing previously about Donald Trump, it would have been a pretty conventional Republican president's speech. It had con yeah. a lot of conservative notes in it. Like, as you said, he touched on the base. He hit immigration hard, which he knows his voters uh, are worried about. But we can't take it in a vacuum. It's totally divorced from the presidency he's had for the last year. When he talks about a message of unity, right. there's been no unity in this country for the last year. And that's mm -hmm. been driven by him. So again, this is rhetoric. He gave a good speech off a teleprompter. But let's see what he does today and tomorrow. And let's remember what he's done over the last couple of years. And let's hear him talk about unity and what he calls a new American moment. I call upon all of us to set aside our differences, to seek out common ground, and to summon the unity we need to deliver for the people. This is really the key. These are the people we were elected to serve. This, in fact, is our new American moment. There has never been a better time to start living the American dream. So to every citizen watching at home tonight, no matter where you've been or where you've come from, this is your time. If you work hard, if you believe in yourself, if you believe in America, then you can dream anything. You can be anything. And together, we can achieve absolutely anything. John, as we've been trying to say uh, for most of this presidency, context matters. And you look at the context that speech was given in, that those words were given in. It's a context of a constitutional crisis uh, about to erupt if Donald Trump moves forward with firing Bob Mueller or firing Rod Rosenstein or even even exposing a, a memo that the FBI director and the deputy attorney general rushed to the White House and to Capitol to bag him not to release. There, there's a reasonable argument that we're already in the middle of a constitutional crisis and it's a rolling Saturday night massacre is what we're seeing in terms of how the the, the ongoing war against the Justice Department and the FBI by the Trump administration to discredit those institutions. What has happened yesterday with, with what happened over the last couple of days with, with, with Chairman Nunes and this memo uh, controversy. Well, I, I've, I've got to say a, also with we're in Paul the middle Ryan, of one of, one of, what Paul I think, Ryan. I think yes. one, of the big, one of the biggest developments, John, yesterday was that the Speaker of the House yes. had the Deputy Attorney General uh, as well as the FBI director begging him not to pass along classified information to an intel chairman who had already proven himself 
uh, unworthy of, of, of having that sort of information. And the Speaker of the House. He chose size. Yeah. He chose size. Yesterday. And yesterday will be a day that will be remembered for Paul Ryan deciding that um, a respected House Intel Committee uh, and a bipartisan Intel Committee uh, is a quaint notion in the past. History looks kindly on Mitt Romney uh, in 2012, pointing out that Russia was America's greatest geopolitical foe. The left, mm -hmm. many Democrats, laughed at Mitt Romney for that. Yeah. Paul Ryan was on that ticket. The Paul Ryan of 2012, who stood proudly with Mitt Romney and said, Russia is our main geopolitical a adversary, is now behaving in this way. It's almost inexplicable, and there are people that we both know who are great admirers of Paul Ryan and have been for years who find this totally baffling. Uh, but to your back to your original point. Wait, let me we, say beyond, I've known him since he was 22, it's despicable. Right. So, and I say that as a guy I like and I've liked since he was 22. Well, His actions disappointed. yesterday were despicable and I couldn't be more disappointed. So we're in the midst of, of a rolling, I think, a rolling constitutional crisis. And it's the reality that unlike Richard Nixon in 1974 when he gave his State of the Union amidst a year into the Watergate investigations, this investigation is in, in some respects, it, it's, it, has more, it has more breadth. Right, because Nixon's, no one claimed Richard Nixon was a traitor. No one claimed Nixon, Richard Nixon was aiding a foreign government. No one was, Richard Nixon was guilty of gross domestic abuses. But this is a two-pronged investigation in which you've got all of that domestic stuff on the obstruction of justice right. side, plus maybe the greatest foreign policy scandal, national security scandal, in yeah. the history of Absolutely. the country. Right. So that's the context so in which this speech takes